in my mug into an empty cup while oh, sitting dear. here absentmindedly. So thank you. Cheers. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Now you tricked your brain into thinking that is all perfectly fresh, beautiful coffee to wake you yeah, up. Yeah, I make the best coffee, guys. Don't worry. Oh, yeah. We're grinding yeah. those beans upstairs. Mmm, tasty stuff. Um, right. Oh, the donut. Yeah, you wanted to talk about that donut uh, thing. No, <laughs> I, I'm, just, I'm just thinking about coffee now. Like, I, I never used to drink coffee. I used to hate drinking, like, tea and coffee, hot drinks and stuff. Um, recently, uh, about a year ago, got a, like, an espresso maker. And my God, every morning oh, yeah. I am, I am there foaming yeah, my milk, yeah. grinding the beans, <laughs> making the coffee. It's a, it's a nice morning routine. But yes, Dota 2. It is a yes. video game that is being played on our screens right now. Hellraiser's Team yeah. Spirit. And but I'm not the type of coffee. So oh, the, okay. that, that will be That's an fine. issue. You see, the first time I had coffee is the game began. <laughs> I actually remember I had a 20 page essay due uh, and it was due in like three days or something. It was like the you know semester project in university. Mm. And uh, I had coffee for the first time when I was trying to work on it late one night at like to 10 p.m. My God, I was never the same. It was so good. Like anyway, caffeine. yeah, that's my story. I, it was, you guys want to know what my story was about? It was a, uh, oh God, I believe it was, t it was a geography degree and I also did literature. And uh, it was a comparison of how the geography shaped the story of Babette's Feast, I think is what it was called, which was a Norwegian story about these people living in a fjord and how because of the place where they lived, it, it really shaped their lives and how the, uh, the writer used geography for that, so. Yeah, my professors really love me. <laughs> I mean, fjords are the most fun, fun thing to make when you're creating an earth, you know? That's true. Little, yeah, they got fjords all over the place. Rivers and stuff. I've forgotten what his name was now. The, um... Oh, my God. Oh, it was, oh my it was Dutch. Sorry. Or sorry, it was Danish. Sorry, not Norwegian. Danish. My bad. It was Danish. My bad. Begins. Offended someone there. I apologize. Sindarin? Tolls? My bad. <laughs> Uh, uh, we'll deny denying the bounty rune there, but we can talk about Dota now, ladies and gentlemen. We're here, we're there, we're everywhere. And Laurel indeed on the Snapfire mid versus the Ember Spirit. Uh, Yadro's got himself the bear down bottom. It's Ench and Mag. And then this is the, that you had been discussing, the Ricky and the Beastmaster. Would they pair this together just based off of the roles? Because that does make more sense. Uh, yeah, it, it'll be interesting. I I don't know how well Mirror's gonna do here. I, I think maybe he just pulls creeps. Yeah, against the Clock Prophet. Like, Clockwork is so good at doing exactly this. Going 1v2, bullying, and he has the backup of Treants as well. So he's doing quite a lot of damage here just to the Beastmaster and Ricky. But it's also the fact they're being pushed away from the wave. And that Radiant Creep Wave, there's still plenty of creeps alive for it to be Shifted Dyer's a little bit closer to that Dire Tier 1, but Mira does get a courier snipe in the meantime. Solo maybe stepping a little bit too far forward. I swear. The fact that couriers, individual couriers were added too late in Dota. Down bottom of Poshka. Oh, barely lives. Oh. Turns back and fairy fires. That was crazy. Should have been dead. Uh, but if they had been individual couriers like right. six years ago instead of however long. Man, God, it probably feels like it has been that long. Anyway, people don't care about the couriers like they would have if they'd existed longer. People give them away for free way too often. You know what I mean? Like, come on, Solo. Yeah, Can't I remember you. The old dog new tricks. I, it was like two, two, three years ago. I remember you going on about people trying to smoke into Roche and then they've got three couriers flying over Observer Wards. And it's like one of, yeah, one of your major yeah. gripes with uh, with. It still play. happens. Yeah. Every game. Playing Courier Wards, guys. It'll win you your pubs. I promise it's, you. It, it, it's bringing like a branch and a fairy fire and it gives away an entire five-man smoke gank. Like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, that wasn't worth it. Yeah, it looks like both of these side lanes, the, the carry is going to be coming out on top. Ursa against the Magnus. And then Chantress, if they land these Star Storms and uh, Shocks, they can push a lot of damage forward. And for the meantime, it looks like Spirit at top there, trying to contend with Solo here, still just dragging waves into, into creep camps. Man, Hogwarts. Bobber just feels like so good in these situations. We all down bottom here, as you can see, uh, a little bit of poking there, but yeah, here we go. Back up, back up there on the clockwork. Just We're punching just away. 1v2ing the entire time. Ring of protection. I'm keeping him very tanky. He's got his magic stick. Nothing else he needs. And Mira Except has the orb of venom too, which also feels kind of bad. It's like you, you purchase this and the support is just bullying you guys anyway. Yeah, you're not chasing the person with all the venom. He's chasing you. Although this could be bad. 
because he's about oh wait he's got the cogs he needs to make it okay i thought maybe there'd be a turn there but he's got some backup coming dog was actually ready that was really cool he ran up further just to ensure that they didn't get the turn back onto solo yeah and also giving the opportunity to be weak. for like a cogs into just right click and collapse down because he's, he's got no fairy fire or hp regen really collapse got trapped in cogs probably would have died yeah why he's pretty far away from helm I guess he's just spamming axes, so wanted that bassy a little, a little earlier on in the lane. Also, Yadro's courier is just up top on the long chill. <laughs> oh, That's a long here, journey. Yeah, he's just waiting for his ring of health, but he's like, I'm not leaving the lane to get it. My courier will get it up top and he will walk it down to me. <laughs> the long migration from the secret shop. I'll have to Imagine come through though. mid and... Yeah, that's dangerous and Terrace is there. Chantres is hiding in behind and trying to come in towards mid. Lol, very low HP. Oh, look, the courier! 50. The courier gives away its positioning! Oh, and Lol is going to walk back towards his tower. Nice hurricane, though, shoving him in towards the Ember Spirit and a sleight of fist, not even needed. Didn't have the mana for it. Just Enchantress right clicks with that Blight Stone was enough. That is hilarious, though. He just starts pinging. He sees his entropy running through his river <laughs> towards my tower. Uh oh. Dyer, I gotta get out of here, but it was Jeez, too late. Coming. <laughs> Well, that's uh, all right. The old Trent checklist here. What's going to happen at 10 minutes in this game? Dark side has a Magnus, so naturally you start to think things like, uh, oh, speaking of which, the Magnus, the auto rope. No! Oh, the Hurricane again. Nice. Really getting better with Hurricane. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they've been practicing, you know, Radiance warming up on this hero. Uh, Magnus, I feel like Magnus teams don't quite fall into as much of a farming lull as they used to, which is good because, you know, it's a little bit more exciting to watch. But if you want to, you can still play pretty chill with a mag a lot of the time because you're obviously going to be farming a lot faster than your opponent. Uh, as Solo is uh, going to be backed up here from the TV from Dahak. But uh, it will be about here, Ursa. So, you know, you're not going to be like you know, free. To, uh, to simply sit back and wait as he will be able to not only farm really fast, but also take down that rogue. So uh, I'm looking for some good action from the Dire in around 10 minutes, I think, this game. Yeah, I mean, a collapse up at top, close to death. Solo is considering going a little further forward under that tier one. Mira also pretty low, so they're going to get bullied out of this lane with uh, no salves, no tangos remaining. Korea delivering some tangos to Mira. Collapse is going to have to rely on his helm, mangoes, and the the tower protection regen to keep him topped up. But yeah, it feels like even even though Spirit have this beast faster Ursa and you look at this and kind of naturally and right, rightly so think, oh, that's a pretty fast paced early lineup. I feel like Ursa lineups over the past year have been Radiant much more focused tower. on second Roche and post 20 minute gameplay than they have straight up just lane phase and dominance early on. Yeah. And in the mid lane, sure. Mira and Lal. A little smoke screen onto Kiyotaka, but the TP from Dahak and the move from Antares and Chantress getting in behind onto Mira. Now shoving Lal away, and this is a six minute move in towards mid tier one. No catapult or anything, so just aggression for aggression's sake, it looks like. Maybe, maybe they can catch Miponchka here, and a good slide of fist nearly brings down Mira. Smoke screen comes, and it looks like Kiyotaka. Huh. Another remnant forward, still giving chase, but will not find yeah, the be last. Be careful though. Oh, the sentry down. <laughs> Lyra's been holding his ulti this whole time. Like, there was a chance he maybe could have gotten Kiyotaka earlier, but he decided not to. So I just wonder, you know, what, what, what setup is he waiting for right now? But ends up just going all the way back home. And a huge take. Seven minutes here, one. Arrow in behind. And the kiss is on top. Nature's Prophet is being blown up. Oh, with a the wraparound, they did lose their tier one. Oh, the smoke screen cookie. Can they kill off Ember Spirit here? Lacking in further control, and he's got the safety remnant up north. And Chandra still wants to give it a go, bullying back Lyle and Mira. But this tier one, especially with an Ursa going Battle Fury in a team, really makes the map very difficult to play for Spirit, it feels like. Eng is playing bot jungle, and I don't think she's going to evacuate there anytime soon. Just stay there, no. farm jungle, steel creeps away from your turret. Yeah, now uh, you're probably gonna have to keep a very close eye on the vision in between the uh, like they, essentially in between the tier one where it was and the tier two, like right where they have that sentry. You got to make sure you keep this area covered because the Ursa is gonna be going back and forth there a lot of the time, and you want to make sure that they don't have good vision of of what Yadro is up to. Again, it just comes back to losing that mid tier one tower and why it's always considered such an important one to hold because of 
how it just protects all of your space. Uh, as well as Roche, which obviously with an Ursa lineup, they're looking to that too. And meanwhile, Solo, he is leeching a lot of sweet XP here from the stack. Oh! Oh, thank you. Steals a couple. Then they ulti for a bunch of the rest. Yeah. <laughs> collapse. Oh. Wrath of nature on there as well. Meanwhile, though, yeah. Important thing bottom is you're, you're watching here is potential RP killed. being set there for Miro. Actually, Yatsuro is not comfortable down here. The fact he's going this rushed battle through build means, you know, there's no morbid mask or anything to keep him sustained. It looks like they're trying to dive top as well. Hellraiser is really exploiting the fact they've got these Hardcore early pushing heroes. Enchbot, Prophet top. Yatoro being dived again, and they will yeah. TP the heart down here. Skewer doesn't even need the RP. Just right click and punch the bear down. Transfer it into another tier one. And this is looking pretty sad for Spirit. They, they are meant to start picking up the pace 15, 20, 25 minutes in. That a 10 minute window where they're looking for a second Roshan or the ability to play into that top dire jungle. But the fact they have no towers. Dam damaged, never mind taken. It makes it really hard for them. <laughs> Wait, oh, okay. For a second, I thought they were actually all full HP, but just the mid tower, which is kind of the worst situation possible. But anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, they're all looking pretty good. I mean, Laro's the lowest core right now, and that's a big problem. Uh, you you got to get this snap off to a better start than this, or or she just becomes a support. This is sort of what mm. happens to these support-ish heroes that get thrown mid if they they don't get like really quick kills or some decent farm. They they often miss out on that. You know they they want to take that and transfer into kills elsewhere on the map. But Lara doesn't have that comfort right now, so he needs to sync up with someone. But Mira doesn't have the dart, so before the dart, like Ricky's setup isn't the best. This will work though. Oh, Down he goes. Finally. Finally reached taking a bit of control there and collapse. This tower is being guarded by Solo and he traps collapse in the cogs. Kiyosaka and Miero both here on that Wrath of Nature. Pretty big bit of damage. <laughs> Clear through the Beastmaster. So that's a pretty big signal there to Team Spirit. The top lane is out of bounds. Do not push that tower. They will bring numbers to defend it. When your position one has to just farm the dead lane. Uh, that means there's not a lot of farm going to any other core, right? Like, your Beastmaster just died. He's not farming and stacking Ancients right now. Yeah, Snap is sort well. of holding mid. Like, I'm kind of impressed Miposhka's already level six. But this Ricky, yeah. level four, is really going to struggle to find anything on the map. Buys the Tome. And it's a difficult one for him. And just the fact that Hellraisers are able to play their own aggressive game plan as well as coming back to the Fen Towers. And now even shutting Collapse out of his triangle. They roar and arrow the Ember Spirit, bring in Lull, but the RP is there. Still losing Ember Spirit as they skewer across the Snapfire into the river. Miero trying to tumble away. And Solo with the cogs to block away Miposhka and Collapse. But Lull with his Hainstrune still giving chase. Trying to body block Solo now for the catch up from Mira. I should be able to find this support kill at long last. Team Spirit guarding the bottom jungle, getting a kill, now defending their own ancient spot and getting another couple. That's gonna feel good. Yeah, that, that was a greedy play to go for. He kind of got baited in a little bit there from Kiyotaka. Yeah, he's an ember, he feels pretty invincible. Uh, and unfortunately, Solo did hookshot into the backside of his Magnus. So, went straight up uh, like like that short film that, that did very well that one year. Pretty much looked like that. And unfortunately, was not able to uh, to stop that kill under the Ember. Otherwise, they get that. He gets pushed out. Uh, you empower the the Ember while all the RP is happening, and they all die uh, quite explosively, you know? So that is the one downside to Clockwork, is the, the opportunity for missing the hookshot compared to uh, position fives generally having, like, safer ultimates. You just need a point click. Like a Fiend's Grip or something. Yeah. Or Global Silence, you know? Well, yeah, that's a good one. Oh, there's the hook shot. Regen runes on the ground. The skewer away. Miero trying to push Lal a little closer to Kiyotaka. That will open up the slight chains. Dark, every fight that happens, he's TPing in there. He's got Treads, Maelstrom, top of the net worth still, but joining pretty much every battle. And he dug up a mango. Oh. So. What's Miro Shoveling doing? his way to victory here. Shadowing the Enchantress. Legion. So this is how he gets I need to XP, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick. Oh. Put down, though. Oh, nice body blocks. Get the Ursa straight on top of Ench. And that final swipe kills her off. They're doing a great job booting these Hellraiser's heroes out of the jungles that they are invading. 
And you just look at the look at the observer warding here from Team Spirit. Double wards in their own ancients area. And then one a little deeper off towards that top jungle close to the tier one, tier two mid. Yeah, very impressive comeback here, because they were starting to lose a lot of territory in the map as well as the, the gold lead. It got us like 4k before. <laughs> the Huck is blocking all the top camps with Treants. That's, uh, that's a solid they, one. They sentried it as well, so they die a sentry, they triple block camps with Treants, now they push the top wave. So Spirit really can't play up there. They have to play bottom, and that's why Hellraisers bring every one of their heroes to blow up Mira. This is getting a bit awkward for Spirit. All right, all right. I don't know. I feel like they've, they've done a surprisingly good job. The hardest part right now for Hellraisers is to try and temper the aggression while also still like taking the farm that you've earned by getting the space. Like you don't want to be too obsessed with getting the kills, but you also don't want to be like missing uh, like creep waves, but you don't want to giving that space over. I guess even if you just farm passively right now, you can see just on the map how much more gold is going to go the way of Hellraisers. Because they're just bottled up right now on Team Spirit and the Ancients. Radiance bottom tower. Yeah, they might be losing a tier two bot soon. Smokescreen thrown out by the Ricky, but an army of skeletons. Bruce Campbell, the Enchantress, is here to take down your objectives. And me Rally my getting, skellies. And they're getting tagged by the shockwave. What have they got? They've got sentries. Yeah, no dust here, just sentries on solo, it looks like. And Dyer, they do scan this Roche attempt. Nobody's nearby, so it looks like the contest around Roche is going to be a close one. Here, Tataka is coming, but Aegis has already grabbed and he has to remnant away. Yeah, just back to safety. I think that's an okay trade uh, for Hellraisers. It's versus an Ursa lineup, so good choice by Team Spirit to say, hey, we can't defend the bottom tower anyway. Let's go take Roche. I don't think that's really going to impact Hellraisers. I think they're happy to get that uh, tier 2 down, take the outpost, continue to hold more space than their opponents. And as long as Dahawk just keeps sending the Treants in and blocking off camps, like, this will be a net benefit for them in the end. So uh, in order to make up for this, they're actually stacking the camps in that dire jungle right now. Did a good job from Collapse. They're using the creeps to help out. So they nice. got to get as much gold as they can. That's desperate. Yeah, this is the, the key. The key timing, right? This next 10 minute window for Team Spirit might not be a, a killer Aegis, one that they kind of carve their own area of the map with. It's more about passively farming and getting towards that second Roshan, which yeah. Team Spirit really do require to get up and running. Radiance but yeah, Earth's the top of the net worth of this Battle Fury. It's still pretty comfortable for Yatoro, just the rest of the heroes having difficulties. Yeah, he will require a lot of help in terms of the, uh, the control still, but... Uh... That's something that Ricky can do, particularly uh, now that he has the dart. I believe it's coming out now. Yep, so he just enough gold at the right time. So nice. well done. They gave him enough space. And now it's time to go for some setups. They've already smoked oh. for this. Does pop, though. Yeah, the roar is there. And they've got oh, the bird to bring down Kiyotaka. What they did? Oh, I tried the bird. Oh, he's going to get arrowed as well. And they got the follow through to come in. And Poshka has another star score in a second. And there's the cookie leap. Interesting. Doesn't land it. So he TPs home. The dart nearly connected as he returned to Fountain. But Solo is safe and sound. What even happens to the dart? It just dissipates. Yeah, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't follow. I wasn't sure he was going to fall asleep in the fountain or something for a second. Oh, we, used to have some, we used to have some bonkers stuff like Juggernaut Omni Slash used to follow people to Fountain when they TP. Never forget the Alchemist one, the, the never-ending concoction buildup. Just flying around everywhere. Yeah. Well, tier one mid and a five-man group up from Spirit, so they are using this Aegis to try and bully Hellraisers, and the Dart and Arrow timing on the Magna is going to catch out Miero. Hellraiser TP in here with their Prophet, trying to kill off the first life of the Ursa. It looks like Kiyotaka a little bit worried about entering the fight up high ground into darkness. Oh, buddy. And now another Dart. There's no Arrow. It looks like Meposhka is just going to back it up. Try and bait Hellraisers up the high ground with a cookie on the thumb tide lizard. They slam down on the clock. Chains won't kill Mira. He's got the Verdurous Gale now to heal him. A nice bit of green from Eposhka. And Hellraisers the ones now being hemmed back on their side of the river. The Helm of the Overlord is so good for taking advantage of those situations and helping to force objectives when your opponents really just want to like cut waves and everything. They're just like running in there with it. Now they have another dart set up. Can't talk about the creeps. We'll get out of the way in time. Nice. Four steps there. Oh, and the ulti was used first too. 
But uh, so what they did earlier, when they darted the Ember last time and they just didn't throw the arrow, Mapocha was just holding it, is they saw Solo was trying to do the body block play, and that just baits Solo into like full on death. Like they don't even have to throw the arrow and he still just dies. So very good understanding of how people are learning to play around this dart. As uh, we're also gonna see Mira place down another courier ward here, because Mira's really smart about Dota like Trent is. Uh, and this is what you can do when you play these Rickies, especially. Rickies are bounty hunters, they're extremely good. If you look at your mini map in the top right there, that ward is going to give them so much intel for this entire mid game. You just third person yourself. <laughs> well, yeah. Just like Trent is. I let them know. On oh, my fourth kick, the dead to Kiyotaka's DD rune. The hook shot did onto Ricky as well. And the Gliding Air out of Dahag. Forcing Yasuro to enrage pretty early on. He does have a BKB here for the Ursa, but an RP stops him in his tracks. Ember zips back up to the high ground again, so low. Pretty low, and Yatoro gonna get cooking forward, that's his first life gone. But they've got the roar and the plan, the rest of Team Spirit coming in from behind him. Collapse and Law gonna shred through the heart. Make a drop and sprouts up, but he's dead. And Yatoro still gunning for this enchantress in the back while Miero and Kiyotaka contend with collapse, and the others has been left alone now. Law couldn't keep getting involved, and he has to run away. While well, Hellraisers win a fight mid, and they push bottom lane tier three down to half health. Oh, that's wild. <laughs> really is. Uh, you had to win that fight. I mean, that was a DD Ember who went home twice, I think. Is that, is that even possible? I don't know. It says he uses bottle nine times. I guess he must have picked up something. Uh, but anyway, DD Ember who uh, had a, a, or got to go all the way back to the fountain, returned to the fight, and continued going after that ages. So kind of hard to handle there as uh, well. I, I do. Uh, well, actually, I, I don't think I agree with those odds. Four think, to one. Uh, yeah, dead I mean, even that's game. probably a little delayed, maybe. Shortly. There yeah, we go. There that we go. That's better. more like it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it looks that's like the the, uh, the old graphs are still favoring Spirit here. Seventy-one percent win probability for Spirit. I mean, that's just going to be the Yatoro, <laughs> the Yatoro Ursa effect, or is it the wow. the Ricky? What do you call it? Ricky pilled. Don't suppose it's Ricky pilled. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, it is. It, it sees how much this hero is winning, even if it looks kind of ugly sometimes. Yeah, you know what it is? I think it's that the bad Ricky games look so bad that it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Uh, but the good ones are just like, I don't know. He's definitely the, the Feast or Fadman support, mm. oh, as yes. we've always said in the Dota 2 cast. Mm, yes, quite. <laughs> the Miss Havisham of Dota 2. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> quite. Good, I'll see you at the Cigar Lounge later. Oh god. <laughs> cabal. The rest of the town is Cabal. Which one? There's a couple of them now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, 10 to 10, nothing in it net worth wise. And Spirit no longer having that Aegis, but still playing forward. A four staff. Yeah, it gets out of the range of the arrow. Getting rooted for a second, and the hook shot's a good one from Solo. But the smoke screen immediately make sure there's no cogs or batteries on play. And Solo straight into his own death. Dark is playing bottom still, just shoving that tier three while the rest of his team scrambling to defend mid. When, when you said uh, hook shot, it's a good one. All I think was, well, is it? Because like, I think he's going to die. I, I had to check Solo's inventory, make sure he had the force staff finished, because he did not. And hook shot at Ursa generally with the force staff is, is bad news bears when his friends are around. It's a risky play. But it could have a huge payoff, as you said. Like, you know, maybe Mag gets in there, finds himself something. Still working on that blink dagger, but there is plenty of setup to help get him there right now. They go under the, oh, he tries to get the TP out. The oh. Pops the smoke and escapes with the help of the, uh, the Hawk as well. Give that extra vision. All right, we've got this game of ping pong now. Collapse with Beastmaster, always very good at shoving that. Uh, off lane all the way towards tier 3, so Hellraisers have to keep coming back to maintain it. We've seen Dahak, every opportunity he gets with his Treants, gets towards the bottom tier 3 and has already done a tremendous amount of damage to it. So a lot of uh, a lot of pruning needed to be done to keep these lanes across the river. Yeah, Dahak, I'm looking for this rune. Trying to do some Ember shenanigans. Oh, we're BKBs. Oh. He gets away from the sleeping dart. Yeah, he, he had to. Because he got dive bombed and yeah, that could have been bad. It's hard to believe that used to stun. <laughs> that, that hog was so broken, man. Well, that's, that's a good point, though, with, with dart, dive bomb, arrow, kisses. There's so much damage that just appears out of nowhere from Team Spirit. 
Whereas Hellraiser's kind of have to commit with a, like a blink RP or a hook shot in from Clockwork. They're showing a hero and oh. saying, hey, we're here and ready to fight. It was an instant Roche. It's already up. Oh, wow. It was like zero seconds. It just spawned. And Yatoro still with... Oh, DD is wearing off, actually. It may have been a move. Mira up to the high ground. Hook shot in. Wrath of Nature's on him. Solo the one to die, though, and Mira escapes. How great. This thumb's got run over. Link here, too. Oh, look at that shard hop. Top tower. Hey, only Enchantress now. Oh, can, can you hit her? Oh, the, the hurricane fight. Antares. <laughs> I guess roared now, though. And Lal Yatsuro on top of the Enchantress can take her down a notch. And they've got a dark mid lane. Ember Spirit slept off. The rune is there. Ember Spirit under the smoke screen. Gonna get shredded by the bear. Radiance top tower is under attack. DKB is coming back another five seconds. Ooh, but you know, they haven't checked Roche yet despite all their vision. And if they're a bit slow, there's actually a chance they don't get this. I think whoever gets this Roche just wins. That, that's definitely where I'm looking at this game right now. Is there an arrow? Oh, there sure is. And the bear snaps into action. BKB's up. Make sure there's no play from Miero to shockwave or skewer him under tower. Oh, I think that was kind of bad. I don't think he gets the kill there. And now he has Blink in 50 gold. And now that he won't have BKB for the Roche fight. Mm -hmm. So if anything's going to give them a chance for Hellraisers, I think that was it. Make a move. Who's going to go into the pit line? Has and has anybody scouted it? Spirit haven't moved no. in, have they? No, even Collapse hasn't noticed, and now it gets pinged from Solo. He's like, guys, that, that, any Rochers? Rochers in the chat? Man, all five of them are. They grouped up mid and smoking as a squad. No vision here, really, from either team. There's one Dar Observer Ward in their own Ancients. Apart from that, looks like the map is pretty dark. They invade into no, the oh, Radiant Triangle. He hit the, he hit the Mirana Illusion. Oh, oh, they're going to bait that they're doing it. Oh, they're going to find the real heroes here. The blink away. So they don't catch small, mid. The world yeah, Taka. He walks up high ground again. He's just so scary going blind into these, <laughs> these dark He thought it was another Mirana illusion. <laughs> <laughs> and then it leaped and he pinged back on it. <laughs> it's real. Mira. Sleeping dart. Arrow's coming. No four staff. He has to BKB. Here, Taka. Another spent BKB. And Roshan scouted by the Hawk now. Team Spirit are in the vicinity. And they know there's high ground vision there, which they'll quickly remove. And it's going to come down to whether Dahak is able to stand his ground with his nature's profit. He's got Glyph near BKB, but he's going to be re you know, really relying on the Force Staff out of the, the Enchantress. The, the Force Staff on Clock is 100 gold away. Oh, they desperately need that for the next fight. But it looks like it's going to happen before he can complete the item. And Collapse showed on a Dire Ward and Lal showed mid. So Hellraisers know that Team Spirit are pretty spread across the map. We're still tentative about actually connecting onto them. How is Yadro just getting away with this for so long? He's been getting so much gold down here, and no one's rushing. They haven't forced him to move. He's, he's just a happy guy. Sweet. Goes back mid for a little bit, comes back down bottom, gets more. He's like 3k edge over an Aegis Prophet. Kind of just like no vision. Plus was right. Now 82% in favor of Team Spirit, and... Uh, and climbing. Radiance yeah, I can't really blame them. It's going to come down to a big mag play. Miro still has the tumbler soy. He's looking for every edge he can get. Well, Ursa showed top. Arrow misses on solo. And Mira trying to get away from this Eng Magnus. Blinks back in toward Miero. Dodges the hook shot as Ricky's still getting rooted up. Caught out by the Prophet. Dahat played aggressively and TP'd forward. He's in the sprout. And Yatoro oh, gets the stun in there. They catch Dahat. Dead for 50. And a double kill for Yatoro now. Team Spirit going to try and use this Ricky buyback to secure themselves Roshan. Radiant's top tower. You are on Yatoro. Go up with his rage though. A tanky bear is a difficult target to go on. And the buyback from Nidus Prophet to Hark. Oh my god, the buyback. He buys in time, pushing them around with a corpse of Sprout and Yatoro. Finally taken down. Hark, he's out. DKB throws him. 
throws the axes onto the Hark. He's dead for 70. And Miposhka landing that final arrow on the Ember Spirit. Four stab drifting. Ricky playing forward. And that Hawk landing. Trying to kill the Ember. The kiss is a landing, but Kiyotaka still survives. Now collapse. He'll buy the Greaves. Lol comes in with a cookie landing on two. And Lol with collapse pairing up. Getting themselves another couple of kills. I was trying to figure out why there weren't more kisses. It's like, oh, he's got eggs. <laughs> Just fired one in there. Oh, slaps though. Oh, oh, the spacing oh, and turns. I left my hoof prints in the backside. That was a lot of. He just got like, oh my god, he's got like a Dying thousand gold because he got the Helm of the Overlord top. creep as well. Oh wow. Carry and gold time. was that? Five four thirty nine plus five ten. Woo. Yeah, that, that was a lot of gold. Helping out the squad with some assists there, it seems. It's, it's gonna be painful for Dahak though, right? Dying, buying back, and dying again. His build up and scaling is now stunted pretty heavily. It is very surprising that he's now below Laurel, considering how this game started. Laurel being uh, obviously very far behind. But you know, there is one thing about Enchantress is that she eventually comes back in these, these games and turns into this massive damage dealer. It's always good to give her a little bit of space when you can. And a long awaited Lincoln Sphere as well here for Kiyotaka. Try and give him some more space and survivability in these engagements. He just needs that, that one extra, like, not being stunned moment to get off that extra sleight of fist with the Empower. And it, it stacks up so quickly in damage. He's almost to level 20 as well, which I presume will give him the sleight of fist hero damage. I mean, what's the maximum stun duration from Spirit here? Three on the dart, <laughs> five on the arrow, so that's eight. Roar four is four. on the roar. Twelve. <laughs> then you add a cookie or something. You've got another like two and a half. So that's fourteen and a half. You're chain stunned for. I mean, abyssal blade. You just yeah. twenty seconds of chain chain disable here. Radiance. Well, we might see them start doing dart into roar as well to try and deal with the whole just like BKB immunity oh, coming off with the like the the sacred arrow. Yeah. He's able to just BKB as that happens. But if you roar, at least you know he's still stunned. The hug. See him on the screen now. He's had his items a while, needs a lot of room to improve. And he'll keep soft pushing with the treants in that bottom lane. It's going to be a, a minor irritant for Team Spirit here. But as always, the primary focus is going to be on the second Roshan. Aegis plus the Axe Shard. How is this still up? It was what, 20 died instantly. Seven minutes ago it spawned? Crazy. It has been a, a whirlwind uh, time here in the mid lane, that's for sure. Lots of battling. <laughs> oh, the Ogre Seal Totem. That, this thing is growing on me, I swear. Every game I feel like that it's in, I see a moment where it saves someone, where they otherwise would have been dead. Oh, you see a dot coming and oh, you tear the totem away. Oh, oh, like oh my all... god! <laughs> The dart Lincoln's pop into an instant blink abyssal. Just gone. See you later. And now it's gotta be rush time, right? Yeah, did he have did he have a remnant? He does oh uh, somewhere. Yeah, I'm not sure where it is. I think it was I think I just saw it expire top. Yeah, must have been. Doesn't have one anymore. Rocket flare sees it to the pin, but Roshan. Laurel being taken. Solo's in. Roach not dead yet. Yatoro. And he's holding off on it. And he kill off his clockwork. Oh, he got it. Almost snatches it. <laughs> he hit the Roshan and the tips come flying through on the clockwork. Well deserved as Solo snags the Aegis under the nose of this hungry bear. Oh, man. And I assume Ursa must have gotten the shard. Did he not have it before? He didn't, no. Yeah. So he did just get it, yeah. Well done, well done. Annoying, that's for sure. That, he keeps doing that on Clockwork. That's not the first time we've seen him do that. And it's an important one as well. We've been hammering on about this second Roche, how it's so important for us to have it, because that's one of the ways they close out the games. You go win a couple of team fights with that Aegis, potentially have you know, three lives with Aegis BKB and Enrage. Now, you know, a little bit, a little bit more challenging when you're facing off against RP and Hookshot. But uh, yeah, a 10k lead and an overfarmed Ursa here. Probably still very firmly a, a game controlled by Team Spirit. He's kind of farming like he has an Aegis, you know? Like he's a little bit away from the team there as they start to regroup somewhat. Mira is uh, messing with uh, Markiotaka right now, jumping to pop and darting as well. It's a real nuisance.
That is true. He can still really mess up this Ember, though. He can, like, approach Invis, smoke screen, into jump dart. Yeah, true. Ah, super annoying. I need these side lanes. Every time I look, it's like zoo on zoo. Two, uh, the two animal handlers, Beastmaster and Eng. But Collapse has the Black Dragon that was able to quell the push top for a little bit until a new round of Treants comes in. But these last few fights, I've I've been struggling to see the you know, the entry point for Hellraisers. I'm I'm still waiting for that big blink RP. Is, is it just down to Team Spirit, the way that they're approaching and spreading that's made it difficult for Miero? I think that's part of it. It's also just like the Ricky, the Vision again, Mira placing another one of these courier wards. Very annoying. Uh, it, it just helps you anticipate where people are moving on the map. They've also seemingly had a permanent ward. Ray Warren Terrace is right now on the inch uh, on that little segment heading into the Dire Jungle. They've constantly had Vision there throughout the entire game. So uh, they're seeing a lot of the moves. What they really need to wait for, I think, for Hellraisers is just the high ground push. I think they know there's no Aegis, so the high ground push is kind of kind of bad for Team Spear right now. Um, they, they have Beastmaster. That's great. But eventually, there is a wants to commit to the fight. That is the long bomb. All right. That's that's no fun. That's just a natural predator on prey action right there. <laughs> I feel like so much damage comes out of the darkness, you know? You're chilling, you're like, everything's fine, I can see a little bit of the map, and then five heroes appear from nowhere. As Team Spirit very quickly snap onto the end, and now moving into that top jungle, they've got the disabled on the Ember, and what you called for, it was the smoke screen, blink dart, into the catch from Lull and Yatoro. It looks like they're aiming for high ground now. They cancelled their TPs. They were considering going top to fight. But instead, they're darting in the mid lane and catching solo. Yes, all the four staff. He's got himself a little bit further, but Yatoro not caring about tier threes or fours. Just goes diving for the kill. They're just waiting, waiting. Oh, another guy? Really? Uh, yeah, this observer what you called is just perfect. The jumps in again. Marana and Ursa from the mid-tier two, straight onto the Magnus by bottom tier three. Three heroes dead. And now they're on to tier three tower. Well, it's hard to defend high ground when everyone's dead. It would have been their best moment. I mean, they're still trying to cut waves and Daha's going to kill some couriers. So, you know. Oh, there's stun from the Hawk? No. Okay, yeah. But yeah, they're just going to try and catch waves. It looks like mid is just going to stack. Ember's dead. Doesn't really have much of a choice here. Yes. Let it die. No, no. Solo. He does not want to let it die. Again, he all's up. A bit of waves there from Yatero, though. And with no buyback on the clockwork, they're still going to be in a 3v5. Here, Tarka. Dark, they're defending the barracks. That's a hundred and wave mid. It worked. Ooh, but oh, no. Again. no! He goes in and finishes the job. The dart. Pop the Lincolns. Team Spirit out of there now. Creeps were dead for so long, and they're being held back in the mid by the Treants as well. That was so close to working. Painful one. That's permanent economy damage right there. Dark from solo. Dark, what do you want to TP back to the fountain? Trying to push out these side lanes as best you can. <laughs> Tough one for the nature's profit when you're so far down the net worth board. Magnus as well. This Ench looks good with the amount of net worth she's got, but yeah, Mag suffering. Yeah, Miro has some lofty goals ahead about a potential uh, refresher. I might just want to see maybe a uh, shard to try and make one big play. Mm. A bit tough. I'm kind of curious about... Jam over to Nero. I guess the Yules make sense against the Ursa. I'm just wondering if another four snap or something would have paid off for the Miero as well. Yeah. It feels like four staffs when you keep stacking them just get better and better. So I, I kind of agree. I feel like that could have been solid, but maybe, as you said, it's just his own little bit of survivability that could help out and turn some of these fights into Yule's. And just now we're looking at Murana with Yule's Lotus Orb, has a gem, so starts dewarding that top portion of the map. The rest of Team Spirit smoke and wandering into mid. A couple of protective wards here from Hellraisers as they plant themselves in their own triangle. Team Spirit making... Oh, oh. Okay, Doggett. Forward. Pop. He 
Tries to get on the Ursa. Yatoro, with the help of Miro, they pop the Lincolns, but don't jump in. The Yule Scepter comes, and Miero. Oh, weird. Did he get four staffed by, by the Ricky? So he couldn't skewer? I think that's what happened. Yeah, there was also a four staff to, to back out Yadro too, so. I think, at least. Oh, something interesting happened there. Couldn't get the skewer away. So Team Spirit still continuing their push on the high ground up to tier three there. He's Courier. Dies in the mid lane to the creep wave. Edge creep comes too. And Yatoro diving tier three. Kisses over the top. Mira gets Lotus Orbed and tricks out. It feels like Hellraiser's just going to be holding high ground. They don't want to chase out of their base. That was a good defense, though. Like, considering the start, they, they got the stun onto the clockwork. They used the kisses, weren't able to kill. Ursa didn't have clock BKB, so that is one advantage for Team Spirit. But I think if there was a time to start moving out of the map, this is it. a matter of who they can catch though. Mira is so irritating. Meposhka is right behind him, so they've got four staffs, lotuses, plenty to disengage if Hellraisers do opt to get on top of someone. Let's see, can they cancel the blink? Uh, the Lincolns, they do. Nice play onto the Ember, but a quick BKB from Kiyotaka keeps them safe. It's just Team Spirit toying with them now though. Yules oh, up and darted. Arrow chain stun with a cookie from Lull. They get Yatra onto that. Magnus and Dahak. Oh no! Step too far forward. Hellraiser was going to get obliterated here. They came out of their base and it just wasn't safe. Yatro getting an impetus shot to the back of the head, but he turns and faces. The person who's trying to kill him gets killed instead. Hunter S dead and another dart finds the Ember Spirit. GG is called. It is over. Team Spirit, they hit their timings in a game that looked dead even. Well, Hellraiser's maybe slipping a little bit in that mid game. We did such a great job pressuring those early towers and taking away the space for Team Spirit to farm. But uh, some really important moves in it before, like prior to 15 minutes, before the Darth uh, were made by.